Hello, Rex parents. Once again, we're here doing some Q&A with some of our school leaders. We wanted to bring you up to date about some important changes for next year. And first of all, our fifth, sixth, and seventh grade students will be using Summit Learning Platform next year. So we want to hear a little bit more about that. So let's just jump right in. What is Summit Learning? Yeah, uh, Summit Learning is a supportive online platform that supplies resources to teachers to help meet the individual needs of every student. So basically it's an enhancement of the personalized learning that the students have already been receiving here at John Rex. It's what they're used to and it's just an enhancement of that. Um, Summit aligns um, most clearly with the, the three components that we value here at John Rex with rigor, relevancy, and relationships. Um, Summit has three pillars. Those pillars are self-directed learning, personalized learning, and um, uh, mentoring. So in um, self-directed learning, students are working on mastering the Oklahoma State standards um, to, to a level of mastery and that meets with our high uh, expectations of academic rigor, rigor here at John Rex. The other is project-based learning um, where the students work on uh, um, mastering their college and career readiness skills through authentic hands-on projects inside each classroom and that uh, aligns with our um, high expectations of relevancy in every academic classroom. Uh, and finally, there is the mentoring piece, which is um, where students will meet one-on-one -on -one with a member of the faculty or staff here at John Rex, and they will focus on the student's um, personal well-being. They will focus on um, the student's academic strengths and struggles, and they'll also um, set um, goals for their academics as they move along. And that aligns with uh, the relationship component that we value highly here at John Rex. So does that mean our kids are gonna be on computers all day long? That is probably the main question that we do receive. It is a very valid concern of every parent. It was a concern of ours as an educator when we first heard about the Summit platform and we were looking into it. So um, no, students only spend on average about an hour and a half a day on the computer, which is not really any different than they do in most academic classroom settings. Uh, the first 45 minutes or 45 minutes of that is during self directed learning where the students are working on the academic standards and trying to master those, getting to a level of mastery in those. But I don't want you to think of it as a call center uh, where computers are open and kids are looking at the computer the whole time and not uh, doing anything else. If you walk in during uh, SDL time, you will see students engaged in um, peer tutoring with each other, helping um, each other learn the academics, or it may be a, um, a lead student and a student that is trying to learn with the help of a student who's already mastered it. You'll also see a teacher pulling small group workshops to work with kids to help them meet individual needs or struggles that they may have in their process of mastery. Outside of that, the other 45 minutes is really where the students do the research into um, the projects that they have been working on in a classroom. Uh, it's also where they will be submitting their evidence of learning to the teachers. And, and the last point is where they will be uh, working on feedback that's been given to them by the teacher, either that they can progress on because they've done so well or some enhancements that they can make to their learning. The rest of the day is the exact same. They will still go to electives. They'll have lunch and recess here at the elementary. They will take the field trips um, downtown. They will go to the library for the library. Uh, they will have the, the opening day morning meetings as well as the closing circles where they work on relationships and team building inside their classroom. So when my child is on their Chromebook, how will they be protected from going to sites or things that they shouldn't go to? We've added an extra layer of uh, with a company called GoGuardian. Uh, in GoGuardian, we are able to um, get immediate feedback when students are off task. Teachers are able to pull up and see what every student is working on live um, at that time when they pull that up. Uh, we also get um, alerts, um, at us as a leadership team and, and the teachers get alerts if the students are off track on sites they shouldn't be or they're searching for things that um, are concerning and that we need to be aware of. All right, but at the bottom line, how is this going to benefit my child? That's a great question, and we should all ask how programs are going to benefit our students. Anytime your school is implementing something new, you want to ask that question. But I want us to remember that it's the teacher that's going to benefit your student, not the program. 
uh, just like you would go shopping at the grocery store for cereal. You walk down that aisle and on both sides there's cereal from the floor to the ceiling and you're thinking, how am I going to make this choice? Especially if you've got children in the basket or children around you, they're all wanting different cereals. And that's kind of what we face in education today is allowing our students to make choices in their learning, but how do we teach them to make the right choices? So when you're selecting that cereal, you're looking at nutritional content, ingredients. Does it taste good? Is it gonna start my day off right? Uh, that's what Summit allows our teachers to do. It allows them to provide appropriate choices for your students' style of learning, their interests, um, what they feel very strong in, what they need to work on. Summit provides a platform that gives the teacher the resources so we can help allow your students to make the right choice. And then last, I want us to remember that our students will have access to their curriculum for the entire year all at one time. So if I am a student who loves math and I'm gonna excel in that area, I don't have to wait for my peers to get to the point where I am in math. If I pass through those content assessments, I may get to the end of my school year by February. Well, what am I gonna do for March through the rest of the school year? I'm not gonna sit around and wait for my peers to catch up. We can allow them to move right into the next math um, grade level and, and have access to that curriculum all at one time. Well, you've talked about the benefits, but as a parent, how can I support my child at home? That's a good question. I also am a parent in Summit. I have a student in high school that their school is using Summit, and I think about that too. How can I best support my child as she's going through this process? And I think the way that you've been supporting your children up to this point at John Rex, you're gonna continue those same types of conversations. The only thing that might change a little bit in the way that you ask those questions is we're gonna send you some prompts and some information on what do we talk about around the dinner table when we're talking about what your child did at school. Our um, summit program will send our parents text messages. I get them from my student and it says, uh, Hannah is working on a history project right now. She's in this particular objective and it's due on this date. Ask her about, and then it will prompt me for some conversation starters around the dinner table. Um, secondly, you're gonna have access to the platform as much as your student does. You'll have a view only access, so you'll be able to look into that platform at any time with a username and login, and you'll see where your student is, what they're working on, down to what goals they've set and what their action steps are to meet those goals, you will have full access to that. So you're going to be able to see live what your student's doing and then turn that into conversation in the home. So I'm sure there'll be points in time that my child will be frustrated. How can I support them? Absolutely. And once again, think about when your children have struggled before. Think about when you as an adult have attempt attempted something really difficult and how did you get through that struggle? Um, at John Rex and in the summit, we call those productive struggles. It's going to be frustrating. We want our students to be challenged and with challenge comes frustration. It's our teacher's jobs and our job as a, a leadership team to help our students get through those frustrations. So first I want you just to stay calm and I want you to trust the process. Um, that's one reason why we're making this video is to give you upfront information about how to support your student. And then also keep in contact with your child's teacher. Ask those questions when your student comes home frustrated. Um, Patrick and I both have started Summit in other schools and I start my parent meetings off before we even get started in Summit by telling them, in a few weeks, it's very likely that your student will come home and say, I don't wanna do this, I don't like it. And that's because for the first time, we've kind of put that ownership back on the student. When the student has set a goal and they've not met that goal or they've not passed a content assessment in the time that they thought they could, they're used to being able to say, well, that was good enough, I'm moving on. And with Summit, our teachers are going to put that back onto their plate and say, you didn't meet your goal. What are you going to do now about that? What's your next action step in order to meet that goal? And so when your student comes home frustrated, ask those types of questions. Well, what was your goal? What did you do to set out to meet that goal? That wasn't met yet. What are you going to do differently next time? Uh, they're going to be learning different study habits. We're going to teach them different ways to take notes. Um, their personality, their self-confidence, those are all things that are gonna play into whether they are frustrated 
and how much are they frustrated and then what do we do in our mentoring sessions that Patrick's going to talk about in a little bit that that will help that student get through those frustrations. So this sounds really different than the way school was when I was a child. How is it really different? Yeah, um, nearly all of it is different. <laughs> it, is, it is a huge paradigm shift for parents and us as educators to, to move past the concept that we have of what was good teaching and what, um, what learning looked like in the past and what we are used to to what it is now to meet the needs of every student. So um, things that are different. First and foremost, uh, as Heather said, students are absolutely taking ownership of their education. They will have uh, the opportunity to pick. Where do they want to go and learn first? Do they want to focus on subjects that they are strong in, subjects that they have difficulties in? Inside those choices, then they decide on which resources that they will use that meets their um, strengths in learning. So they, they take ownership in a way that they've never taken ownership before. The other thing is that um, the students are learning to mastery. We expect them to, to learn all the material in an in-depth way that they'll be able to apply it in the future. And when we look at mastery, look at did you pass the content assessments with 80% or higher? We uh, don't let you um, accept a C or a D and move on and never really fully grasp the concept so then it causes you struggles in the future. Um, also, no grade is final. When we are doing this, um, our goal in education, it should always be to continue to have the student grow and learn. So in Summit, no grades are final. The students will receive feedback in projects from teachers and it will be um, uh, complimenting them on the success and the growth that they've seen, but it'll also have um, areas that they can continue to grow and enhance and improve on projects. Mm -hmm. They will have opportunities if they don't master content assessments right away to go back, reflect on what they've done to learn, the resources that they've used, and um, continue to learn and work to master those, those concept skills. Um, one of the other things is that we never lose track of time. We maximize every minute in a classroom. You will never hear your child come home and say, we didn't do anything because we had a sub. Um, you won't hear them say that we had an opportunity to just play on the computer all day or watch movies because the teacher wasn't feeling well. It is a learning opportunity every minute of every day and we, we strive to not lose any of those minutes. Um, next thing is that teachers' feedback is in real time. So when they turn in projects, there is a very quick turnaround. It's not a week later with the final grade on it and no comments of what they have done and where they can improve. The feedback is live, it is real time, and it is always full of, of compliments as well as suggestions on what they can work on. And that feedback comes also in SDL when they are working on um, small group workshops with the teacher and they've pulled the data and they've really looked to see where strugg struggles are for individual students and they go to meet those needs individually. And finally, to me, the most amazing thing is watching kids celebrate the success of others. Um, to, to watch a student go and try to take an assessment and pass that first assessment or any assessment and the celebration that comes with it, students cheering for other students, it really will give you goosebumps the first time you see it because it is not something that you see often in academics and it is a, a truly powerful moment when you get to see it. I love the feedback part. Um, yeah. For my students to have immediate feedback on where they can grow, that's powerful. As an adult in our workplace, when we receive feedback, we wanna immediately make an adjustment to make that project better and that's what we're teaching our kids. I think that was probably one of the biggest change for me from the way that I learned in school. Well, our parents at John Rex are super involved in their child's education. How can they stay current on what's going on with their child in Summit? Yeah, great question. Um, as a parent, you will continue to get progress reports and report cards per periodically throughout the year like you have in the past. Um, but the big difference with Summit is that you're able to have full access to your student's platform at all times. Summit will supply every parent with a login mm -hmm. that takes you directly into your child's platform. And inside that platform, 
you're able to see on the progress page actual comments that the teachers left, suggestions that they have made, um, the academic success your child has had on content assessments. Um, and on the progress page, you're also able to see up to the date um, real minute to minute grades. And as your child progresses, grades are entered, assessments are passed, it adjusts those grades immediately. So you have constant up to date grades with your child. Uh, at the same time, uh, you're able to see their progress throughout the entire year. So you're able to go to a page on there and you can see how your child is doing compared to the entire academic year, where they're ahead, any struggles that they may be having. Um, it is always there at your fingertips. Well, the grading sounds like it's going to be different, and I think that's f f a positive thing. So tell us how it's yeah. going to work. Uh, grades and summits are broken into two categories. First, it is from the project that the students work on. 80% uh, of their grade comes from those projects and the cognitive skills or the college and career ready skills that they develop inside those projects. It's the most important thing in an education is to have those skills so 80% of their grade focuses on that. Uh, the other 20% of the grade comes from their self-directed learning where they go to pass past the content assessments based on the Oklahoma standards. And this looks like a more traditional uh, type of learning that parents uh, are used to, um, where they go and they actually uh, learn a set of curriculum and they go to master that. And in that 20%, they have to get to mastery before they're able to move on. So um, students are expected to score 80% or higher on those assessments before they're able to move on to the next um, subject um, content area that they would like to work on. Well, both of you have been administrators at schools that have used Summit Learning. So what were the positive results that you saw? Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest game changers for me when I was a principal in a previous school where um, we implemented the Summit Learning platform was the way that the students started talking about what they're doing in class. Um, every day I had re, uh, lunch supervision, so I would be in the cafeteria with uh, third through sixth grade. I had sixth grade at the time. And the first time that students entered the cafeteria and they were talking amongst themselves about what they were doing in the classroom without me instigating that conversation, they were talking about what content assessment are you on? I'm working on this objective in this project. Did you pass such and such? Do you need help with that? These kids were owning the conversation about what they were learning and said before they would come into the cafeteria and you know talk about anything but school or what was going on in the classroom that was a huge difference um, in the school that I worked in before what summit instigated those conversations um, secondly they they own their own learning process when a student wasn't doing well that conversation was well I think I watched too many videos about that particular objective. Next time I'm going to read the article and I'm gonna do note taking. So they are learning these different strategies of how to learn the content along the way and they're making those choices of what best fits how they learn. So their conversations were, I didn't meet that goal because here's what I did incorrectly or here's the choice that I made. Now I'm gonna make a new goal and I'm gonna make this choice. That was students talking, not adults. And that was one of the biggest things I saw. Um, and I would second everything Heather said. We were able to see that uh, at Jackson as well. And then also this year at the middle school, uh, those, are, those are great things that you're able to see every day. Um, the things that, that I saw as the biggest game changer was the mentoring. Uh, the mentor piece is an amazing piece where once a week, a student knows that there is somebody at that school that is vested in them personally. They get a one-on-one -on -one conversation to talk about anything from personal struggles or personal successes, academic struggles and successes that um, in a normal traditional classroom, the, the teacher doesn't um, have the time or doesn't set that time aside for that. And that is a, a major focus in the Summit Learning Platform. And, to know that there is somebody at that school that is 
personally invested in your success, your long-term success as a human being, as, as an academic learner, is, is something very powerful that you don't get to see very often and, and really is um, a wonderful thing to be part of as a mentor and to also see um, the kids know that there is someone to go to and that they can connect and reach them. Uh, the other thing is the, the cheering of the success of others. Um, Again, I mentioned it earlier, but when you see other children vested in the success of their peers, mm -hmm. it is a, a truly amazing thing to be a part of, to see, to witness, and um, to feel, because it, it, is, it is something that students rarely get, um, and some students may never get or have never gotten, and in this situation, there is there is always somebody there to cheer them on, to support them, and to recognize yeah. what they have, have done. And that's kind of the way the world is going. Mm -hmm. You know, no longer are we seeing people climb the ladder on top of other people and only one person gets to the top. Our students are gonna climb that ladder together and that's what our downtown neighbors who are hiring people out of college is looking for. Can they collaborate? Can they work as a team? Can they cheer each other to success? Can they pull from each other's strengths and realize where their weaknesses are? Uh, that's, that's something that this model of learning encourages. We've talked about children. We've talked about the parents and how they can be involved. Let's talk a little bit about what the teacher's involvement will be with Summit Learning. Great questions. You've asked a lot of great questions today, actually. Uh, I'm hoping that this will help our parents better understand everything that we're going through to get this ready. Uh, but the first thing that I did is I, I kind of used my experience in my previous school with Summit and, and the successes that we saw to start that conversation with my fifth grade team. Um, once their interest was piqued about, well, tell me more about Summit Learning and, and is that something we could do? We set up some appointments for our team to go over and meet with Patrick and his teachers at the middle school so they could see Summit in action. They got to talk to their previous students. So they taught these students in fifth grade. Now they're in sixth grade using Summit. So they had relationships with those students. It was an easy conversation for them to come into. But they got to see the platform in action, the kids in action. And then they also set aside time to meet with Patrick's teachers. And that way the teachers could sit down and say, here's what's really hard about this, and, and here's what's really great about this, and here's what we've learned so far. And so with those conversations and with that interaction with the middle school, I wanted my fifth grade team to make that decision. Is this for us? Is this for our students? Is it, does it align with the philosophy of John Rex and personalizing to the individual student and making learning authentic? And once those teachers said, yes, we think that it does, then they decided, let's go ahead and do this. The next step was we went to Houston for a week with Patrick and some of his team members, and we went through very extensive training to prepare uh, for the school year. Uh, Summit put that on, and, and we were allowed to attend and uh, learned a lot there. So our next meeting is coming up in a week. Our, parent, our teachers are coming back again a day early to do more planning for Summit and be prepared for kids. Uh, our entrance into it here at the middle school was a little bit different. Uh, there was a, a parent committee that was put together to look at personalized and individualized uh, learning. And I know you all went out to several schools. The parents went to different schools, looked at different models of personalized and uh, online learning, and came down and selected uh, Summit. I know that they visited Heather's school uh, at Adams. They also visited uh, at Jackson as well. And um, once you get the buy-in of parents and you see they're able to see, they're able to see the value of Summit and how it aligns to John Rex, then I know that you all made the decision to go forward with Summit. From there, um, once I was able to come on board, then we were able to directly select the teachers knowing specifically that we were going to do Summit, that they were going to have a vested interest in that. And uh, you gave me the opportunity to go and hire teachers that were already experienced in Summit, uh, as well as new teachers that were committed to personalized learning, project-based learning. Um, and um, so we were able to approach it from that direction. And so uh, the original team that was there was hired, um, committed to Summit. We were then able to follow up this year and hire two more teachers that we went through um, a, a vigorous uh, process mm -hmm. of um, selecting them for 
their desire to be using technology and personalized learning and we gave them the opportunity to come in and observe the school and make sure that this was an environment that they wanted to learn in and once they were committed to that we also went to the training as well and we will commit together to be able to work um, first time as a fifth sixth seventh grade unit um, as a team collaborating together to make sure it is the best for the kids. Well, that all sounds great, and thanks for sharing today. I know you all are excited to get this school year started. So we just want to thank you parents for being a part of this informational video. We thank Dr. Pierce for asking such great questions. Uh, we hope that this will be uh, an informational session that allows you to better understand what the students will be doing. And just know that we are approachable school leaders and we want to talk with our families. So reach out to us via email, give us a call, stop by. Um, let's just learn together and go through this process together and make it the best year we can. Excellent. Yes. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.